And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Geek Watch, where the watch always begins. And this is the one and only this is the one and only place where you can have folks of all shapes and sizes just getting together and talking about geek shit over drinks. Mm -hmm. I am your one and only gaming monk, better known as Milja, and with me I have four good brothers jo joining the watch today. We have the flamboyant flyer in our li in our living Wikipedia, good brother Flutter. We have the we have the man who who is who is con who is continually dumbfounded at the stars actually not sucking for once. <laughs> You know it's true. <laughs> yeah. And I'm not alone in the damn thing. No. Oh. Good good brother Maddie. We have we have the we have the man who is never green with envy. Good good brother Zeltrax. And we have Yo. and and we have an anime shit poster turned VTuber, good brother Shades. How are we doing today, man? <laughs> Yes, I have entered the virtual space. No, I will not become Kilo Khan. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> you useless meat thing. No. Look, if you if you ended up doing that, I'd have I'd have to play the con clip. <laughs> <laughs> look, you look, you guys don't want to hear that clip. Stop naming your bad guys con. <laughs> 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 oh, I needed that. Yeah. So, as you can see, tonight is a to is a Tokusatsu theme night for our topic, and this is one of those cases where I, where um I have to ask the question: uh, What do you do with a drunken sailor? What do you do with a drunken sailor? Shave his belly with a rusty razor. <laughs> Because we are talking about <laughs> the drunken sailor problem that Super Sentai has been plagued with. Now, for a bit of background, a while back when we did the Riku Sanjo um, tribute, I I believe it was Shades had mentioned that for a good chunk of the he of the Heisei era, all the way up to um, Neo Heisei, there was this drifting problem where. Common Rider didn't really know what its place was going to be. And when Double came along, it it actually had a place given. And I had made I had made the offhand remark that Super Sentai never really got that. But we didn't obviously we didn't have time to really delve into it because w there was only going to be one Super Sentai series that we would have talked about at the time. Well, so now it's time to fire off that Chekhov's gun. <laughs> <laughs> so there is been, now I do want to make one specific caveat when it comes to this. The currently running series and the and as far as I'm concerned, the first actual um, Reiwa era Super Sentai. Um, Kira Major is exempt from everything that we're going to be talking about. We're going to put that in a nice little bubble, and we're going to put this all the way up in the corner. So everything we say doesn't reflect yes. on Kira Major mm -hmm. because it's in its bubble. I'm probably going to need. I'm probably going to. And if you say, and if you want to ask her opinion on it, so far so good. That's all you're getting. Oh, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Um, so far so good, but give, but given the fact that a that it's being run by the guy who ha, who literally wrote the book on how to write a Super Sentai season, it's kind of hard to screw that up. You'd be surprised. I know, I know. I immediately regretted what I said as soon as I said it. Because. <laughs> I think even Arakawa has every author has some stinkers in them, and I'm pretty sure Arakawa is no exception. Yeah, he's had a better track record than most, and usually when he has problems, it's because of something else. But uh, yeah, we were actually talking about this earlier. Arakawa, yeah, um, Gokaiju is a little more overhyped than it deserves. As I've heard, let's be honest, people. I don't care how much you like. I don't care how much how good you think Gokaiju is. It has its problems. The villains, yeah. Um, 
Now, I do, I do want to open with this. I believe it would be fair of me to say that the Super Sentai division of Toei has a bad habit of learning the wrong lessons from their mistakes. Now, let's start, let's start with the obvious one, what Des Shinta has referred to as the Car Ranger effect. And let's get yes. one thing out of the way first. Car Ranger did not save Super Sentai. That, that is an old, old man. That is an old wives' tale, basically, because mm -hmm. no, the true savior of Super Sentai was Jet the Man. Yeah. Because before Jet the Man, Sentai was on the verge of cancellation. Five Man was near was putting Sentai on death's door until Jet the Man came around and revitalized it in ways no one had ever seen. Car Ranger. Yeah. Car Ranger by in comparison. Did not help things after O Ranger, and O Ranger wasn't at fault for its problems. No, yeah, no, it wasn't. O Ranger it was, was a victim of circumstance. Mm -hmm. It was, and even then, it wasn't a bad series by the end of the day. So it didn't need saving. O Ranger ended up making things worse, and the numbers reflect that, people. Mm -hmm. As the saying goes, the numbers don't lie. And when it comes when it comes to when it comes when it comes to the those when it comes to those numbers, the the issue is the issue is always the mindset of hey if this um if this if this um serious one doesn't work then let's go for let's go for silly and th and hopefully we'll get a better rating out of that. And, <laughs> and, nine, and nine times out of ten that hasn't been the case. Anything. No. Every time they've gone silly, it's actually got. It's actually tanked things harder. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes now, when it comes to now, um, that's one of the, that's one of the obvious cases of the wrong lessons. Some there's there's some other instances we could go with as well, such such as um, somehow out of nowhere, yellow being a female color, even though, um. Yellow being a female color is more of a Power Rangers thing, I'd argue, than it is a Super Sentai thing. Yeah, and somehow that was the reason why we couldn't have a Yellow Ranger in Ko mm -hmm. When <laughs> Thanks, and, and, Takahita Omori. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. so salty over that. <laughs> it's funny there. Neither would I. Yeah, it's all, it's all these little things that just keep happening in Sentai, even though it has been made painfully clear that we don't want them! I'm not even sure Japan wants them either. No. Uh, one of the, like, uh, Japan had put out a poll not that uh, a while back stating what were your least favorite tropes in anime and, and television media. And a lot of the tropes that were at the top of that list are tropes we see still see in every fucking season of Sentai. Stuff like body swapping. Time traveling, especially to the Edo period, though that's more of a common Rider thing than a Sentai thing, but it still happens. You know, all these other kind of tropes that just, they keep bringing up when it has been made painfully clear, nobody likes them. Yeah. Right. Now, when it comes to... Now, there is one, there is one major trope that has been... The source of many memes over the years, and also the source of frustration over the years that I think we need to address. Let's talk about the idiot red problem. Oh, here we go! We've already got All the right. unholy trinity of idiot reds on on the um co on the cover of this episode, so we may as well go whole hog into this shit. Yeah. Now, <laughs> some. Some people will argue that this tech this started with Kyo Yuger with Daigo Kiryu because he was a bit of a goof. However, I want to dispel that claim right now because Daigo Kiryu was not an idiot. He was accepted. Yeah, he's he was not a goofy, moron. But if you actually watch how he acted in the in that season, he was actually very intelligent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in fact, I even want to state a certain example of Daigo not being an idiot. Like, that one episode where Uchi had to help a kid who was so, was so dependent on his parents for everything. 
he was dealing with a monster called Debo Coin, where he where she had two modes, a cute side and a double side. So the characters were fighting the double side, and Kawain shifted to the cute side, and everyone was just going, oh, so cute. Deckle just goes, grabs my gun, turns the barrel, bang! Oh! You know, I just saw you change right in front of me, right? And then Monster <laughs> says, oh, no, somebody with common sense! <laughs> <laughs> Boom! Thank you! Yeah. That's now, my point. I will. I will admit there is. I will admit there is some warranting to the to the Daigo Sentai Daigo Ranger complaint. Although, <laughs> I think that one is um over is overemphasized. Um, yeah. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. even then, they did try to do some things to mitigate that. Yes, there's the carnival form where he basically uses everyone's mechs as add-ons to his form. But then you also look at stuff like the uh, the two, the batteries that they use to create a giant cannon attack, where they all have to work together to power it up. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, not victory and maximum. So, uh, yeah. yeah, victory and maximum. Thank you. The, that requires the whole team to work together to power that battery, those batteries. So, yeah, uh, not quite. Mm -hmm. No, it's there, but it's not in your face about it. Now, if if you were to, now, um, I realize that this is going to be a tricky question because of the fact that the idiot red problem is not is is not one where is not one um where the origin can be simply found. It was it was a case of building up over sev over several years. But if you mm -hmm. were to pick a series that was the canary in the coal mine in retrospect, what? Which one do you suppose would it be when it came to the starting of this whole idiot red um, motif? Uh, oh, and, and, and hey, you got a late edition every... of Xanatrix. Ah, hey, Xanatrix, hello. welcome. As far as when the idiot red thing really started to become a thing, I think the obvious answer would be Russia Sentai Tokyujir with Wright, with Wright Suzuki. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because he, one, he was an absolute fucking moron. Now, it was a little more excusable this season because they actually made it clear that these were actually like 10 year olds who just looked like adults because of imagination and the powers of the, of the Sentai. Mm -hmm. But it was still there. You know, stuff right. like how, you know, how more often than not he'd get the power up, though he did share it. But the real king of r the red being the dominant force, even though he's a complete and utter moron, was at the end with what you see on screen, the rainbow form, where the others gave him his pa their power, and he basically single-handedly defeats the big bad. But again, there's the best example of Wright being an absolute idiot was the one episode where they all get arrested or they all get brought in for interrogation by a police officer mm -hmm. and the cop pulls the whole udon thing you know the age-old trope where oh we'll give you some food if you give us your give us information oh, yeah, about what we're into yeah that the katsudon katsudon trope the katsudon trope and right or wrong as many of the fandom have dubbed him Mm -hmm. <laughs> immediately confesses to the crime they didn't commit just so he can get the katsudan. Oh, Dumbass! Oh. Now, there would be no excuse in that, child or otherwise. I have... <laughs> now, yeah. I've, se I've seen... Um, I've seen... I've seen some argue that... that, it re that the, the issue really started with um, Magic Ranger. Not really. Well, no, no. I mean, the Red and Magic Ranger. He was a. He could be a little stupid, but I wouldn't call him outright moronic. He had his he moments. Has moments. moments. He had his. He had his moments. But yeah, the, 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 he isn't outright idiot. His. His. It was. It was lack of experience. He was the youngest of the family. Yeah. The There's thing exactly. about it, the thing that defines an idiot red in Sentai, and this shit to points this out, is that not only does the person have to be dumb, but the series has to bend over backwards to make them correct. 
See, and even when a, that even when a red no is being an end. idiot, even when a red is being an idiot, it's forgivable if it's called out. If the series calls out their stupidity and they work to correct it, they are not an idiot red. Mm -mm. That was the problem with Tokujir and a few others that we'll be getting to soon. Is that they were idiots, but by some ungodly contrivance, they were correct. Even when there's, by all accounts, they shouldn't have been. So, uh, I, there we go. I, I have to go and say, then, by all accounts, Bon Bon, Deca Ranger, he was a constant idiot, and there were times where the the show bent over to make him right in the end. I mean, his introduction. <laughs> oh, yeah, that whole thing. Oh, God, I've seen The first that. three episodes. I... It, Bon bon it may not have been as egregious, and they may have fixed it as it going along, but I would say probably in the early going, yeah, he fit the trope. No, Bon Bon fit the trope for like the first half of Decker Ranger. And then when they started doing like SWAT and uh, and all that fun stuff, that was where he started to pick up and stop being as much of an idiot. But he was still the idiot of the group. Even more so Which than... Is probably why not as many people give him too much shit, because you're not wrong, but they did make steps to correct it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Later Sentai, no. They just continually, even at the very end, made them right when by all accounts they should have been wrong. Yeah. Yeah. But as a, I guess we could call him um, pro, a, a prototrope version. It's, it's an yeah. early enough yeah. that it's a prototype to the trope. Uh, um, there, are, there, are two, there are two series that I actually like that may have helped accelerate this trend in in an indirect fashion and though and those right. are gokaiger and shinkenger but gokai marvelous was not an idiot red no, no not by no. any means neither no not one. an idiot neither neither she neither was no nor yeah. marvelous were, were idiots but though though both of those God placed a heavy amount of emphasis on their reds. Yeah. No, I will agree to that. Heavy I think reliance Gokaiger on red, less yeah. so. Gokaiger less so, but it was still kind of there because they did focus a lot of the main story on him. But they did enough to mitigate it by giving the other characters a good amount of focus here and there. Like, especially Joe. I think his backstory, his story with his friend becoming Gotti Zork, I think helped mitigate a lot of that. And Guy being a major player... Also helped a bit. Yeah, Guy was I would be lying if there. I said there wasn't some inklings of that there. Yeah. I think it was it was a combination of those kind of series doing each doing different parts of the trope that culminated at Tokyo with the trope in full effect. Yeah. And but even then, um, it's, I, I don't think that it's, that it's a uh, that we have an idiot red every season. Um, though it has been happening a little more often than I'd like recently. Yeah, no. There, there's been a couple of seasons lately that have mitigated that trope. Lupot, uh, Lupin Ranger versus Pata Ranger definitely did not have that trope at no. all. No, they didn't. No, I mean, you, you, thank the gods. You could, you, <laughs> and with two reds, what, the potential for at least one of them being an idiot red was very high. But yeah, even, but they, you know, <laughs> yeah, even Kyrie uh, was Patrick. very clever in his ways, and Keichiro was very bullheaded, but he, he had some intelligence to him. He did. And oh, he even had a lot of soldier, Yes, he was very intelligent, just very bullheaded at times, very mm -hmm. stubborn. Mm -hmm. And Ryu Soldier, well, the red in Ryu Soldier was a little goofy. He never reached full idiot status, though the other half of the trope, the focus on the red getting all the power-ups, was yeah. definitely a problem. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. You fact, sold Max, anybody? To that end, I um, I'm trying. I'm trying to remember when the when when was the last time that we had that we had an instance of a power up being distributed to a power up that that was a full on new form being distributed to the entire team instead of just instead of just one. That and... was Go Busters. Go Busters. Mm -hmm. Our custom. Last time. Which is uh, which I have to which I have to wonder if um. If to if Toei looked at Go Busters, then because of how it didn't do well for one reason or another, um, overcompensated running the other way. 
That is a possibility that I can very much see. Now, granted, yeah, and some some of the reasons that GoBusters didn't do as didn't do as well were completely out of their control. Um, name, namely, namely the whole thing with Fukushima. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's the pro. This, this is a problem we see in a lot of medium. And in fact, actually, I'm going to throw it. I'm I'm going to give Maddie a shout out on this one because this is the kind of we thing we thing that happens in wrestling too, where it doesn't matter if there were circumstances beyond their control that caused a dip. A dip is a dip. They're going to change course because of it. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. How, it's it's the ultimate often, panic button. It is. It doesn't matter what caused it. Even if they're even if everything. By all accounts, it should have worked. If it doesn't work because of circumstances outside of anyone's control, doesn't matter. It didn't work. We're not doing that again. And in combination with that, what I think caused this was not only was the GoBusters did poorly, but then Koyuja turned around, and while it didn't go all in on any of the tropes, it showed enough of them to get Toei's attention when it actually did really well. Mm-hmm. And that's that gate cam. And there is one other factor that I think has been lending itself to this trope, to the to the idiot red and a lot of the dumber tropes of Sentai. And it's one particular name. Oh, Mr. Shirakura. Shinichiro Shirakura. Now, I want to make it clear as a person and as someone who has been helping to bring Sentai to the West in a lot of regards. I'm not going to say he is the absolute monster we used to think of him as. But when it comes to how he runs things in terms of Sentai, the fly, the, the red flags have been there from the beginning. Let's remember that the very first season that he actually produced himself was Kyoryu Sentai Judanger. Which, mm-hmm. while, while it has its historical importance for the, for the fact that it gave us the original Power Rangers... When you actually go and wa- when you actually go and watch the when you actually go and watch Jew Ranger itself, it's pretty it kind of standard. sucks. It does. It, it, it's it, extremely bogged down by kid plots. And exactly. I would say that, that, it, that doesn't suck, but it's not. It do, it's not at the same level we expect from Super Sentai. It's mediocre, and because it's, it's mediocre, yeah. the thing that it, the thing it that gets I dragged find, down by name recognition. The thing that I find extremely funny about um. About about that series is Toei insistedly believed that the idea of a sixth ranger would not catch on to the point that they would not include Burai in the credits. That's so dumb because sixth rangers it became is. super super popular. Yeah, yeah, and it was thanks to Burai, Burai that that sixth ranger trope was so fuck so fucking um prevalent, so fucking well done. Yeah. yeah. Now, here's the reason I bring why I bring up Jew Ranger involving Shirakura, and who's now the executive producer who runs all of Superhero Time, essentially. Mm-hmm. The thing of it is, is that they, remember that Jew Ranger was following up after the or previously mentioned Jet the Mat, and how successful that was—a series that was considered darker, more serious, and just overall deeper than any Sentai before or really since. So yeah. you would think with the overwhelming success of Jet the Man, that that would be the direction Sentai would go in being more serious. You know, maybe not as serious as Common Rider, but still more serious in general. No. But then here comes Shirakura, but then here comes Shirakura, who is deciding Sentai is for not just children, but young children, little children. Yeah, there's a big and that disconnect was, between the two. It was, and that's what led to a lot of Jew Ranger's problems was that he treated it like it was a little kid's show. And so all the child plots, the fan, the, the storybook elements of Jew Ranger, everything like that, that was where he, his mindset was. And I think, a part of, I think a part of that still exists with him today in how he sees Sentai. And since he's the head haunt show that basically makes all the final decisions, he, this is why we dub him dub him in terms of this in terms of this side of him mr shirakura akin to mr mcmahon because <laughs> that is what it is and 
Uh, I just had another thought um, going back to Idiot Reds very, very quickly for the first half, the actual Idiot Red where the plot has to bend over for them. Um, Jen, Geki Ranger. Yeah. I mean, he, he, even by the end of the show, he never really learned to be like a normal person. He was always well, Jungle Kid. Yeah, yeah, he pretty much was. I think the again, there were other there were things about that series that made it not as bad. Made like it the a fact lot that everybody terrible. got their upgrades. Yeah. Everyone got the power ups, he didn't dominate anything, and the show didn't truly bend over backwards to make him right. At least not as often as other later shows would do, but I'd be lying if I said there wasn't probably an instance or two where it happened. Mm -hmm. I mean, that show was kind of all about the whole might makes right thing because it was very heavily based off of Wuxia. It yeah. is. So, so might makes right is a big thing in Wuxia. Translating over that the Super Sentai, Jen is right if he wins the fights. <laughs> yeah, so you're not entirely wrong there. But again, mm -hmm. there were other factors that made it bearable. Yeah, yeah. Um, as for the, the, the disconnect of Super Sentai, because... I, I've noticed that for years. Um, in fact, at, more and more often, even with, with Saban at the helm of Power Rangers, um, as they brought stuff over from Japan for source material, their plots did get more serious. And whereas some of the plots in Super Sentai remained less so. The biggest, uh, the biggest one I can think of is, while Deca Ranger was actually a pretty serious series, um... SPD was more serious, which was... Oh, it was. Yeah. It was amazing. And mm -hmm. I'd say, I'd say, I'd say some, I'd say some part, part of that. I have to, I have to wonder if in, if in some, if in some regards that, um, the, the, uh, turn towards seriousness was a, was a consequence of the fact that Disney did not... Because a lot of a lot of the a lot of the a lot of the serious turns happened during the late end of Saban and the um and a good chunk of the Disney era, mm -hmm. and I have to wonder if a lot of that had to do with the the la the lack of an extreme amount of oversight, simply because Disney was trying was trying to do everything they could to not talk about this to not talk about the show. Yeah, they they <laughs> yeah. they just wanted an easy cash cow. They didn't care how like they didn't care about the show at all. It was they no, just were the, like, the only like, they, they were ready stayed, to. The only reason they still made more was because of the whole thing with I believe it was Jetix Europe. Yes, it was that and that and the you know the the producers at Power Rangers said, hey, we move this to New Zealand, we can make this on the cheap, and you guys can make even more money. Mm-hmm. You know, they found a way to make it profitable, and it for the most part it worked. Like, not yeah, you know, some people could say that not every season was great, and there it definitely produced what I believe is one of the absolute worst seasons in Operation Overdrive. Mm -hmm. But that being said, that was one season that just did poorly. Be Was that cheese you cut out? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you did. Yep. All right. You still hear me? Your, yeah, very, you your hear sound you. quality is very, very low, though. Yeah. Well, I, I, know, I know what happened. Uh, uh. Reset my, it reset my thing when I put my headphones back in. Oh. Uh, uh. Give me a second. You know, boys, on this note, I have to go to bed, so I'm sorry to cut this one short. No, wor no yeah, worries, Brian, man. Maddie. Stay, stay frosty. Fine. Have a good night, everybody. Yeah, night, Maddie. Night, Maddie. Maddie. Now, when it comes... Now, I'd say... I'd s the reason I want to focus on that whole emphasis on the, on the idea of the... There's always there's always been a degree of ha of having the main focus be the red, but um, it was one of those things where um, it got it got taken more it, the boundary line kept getting kept getting pushed a few more inches every year. 
Um, mm. It's a classic mm. situation of give them an inch, they take a mile. And pretty much. Yeah, I think I think I, I think what um definitely didn't help on that matter was how successful um Shin Kenjer was. And granted, okay, so Shin Kenjer had a very clear reason for focusing on its red. He was a he was essentially a daimyo, and they were all his vassals. He was, yeah, Pre- pretty much. But the pro- but the problem is when you try to apply when you try to apply that universally. To, yeah, I mean the the reason that was big was exactly because this is a lord; these are his vassals. And um, as we pointed out with Gokaiger, to, to the lesser extent, the reason marvelouses can be slightly justified was this is the captain; these are his crew. Yeah, but both mm-hmm. both series. Uh, although Shin Kenjir did it less well, both series did try to mitigate that. You had character stories almost uh, almost with every every episode that weren't just about uh, Takeru. I mean, there was the yeah. one where where they're both trying to get the where uh, was uh, specifically Chiaki um, was trying to compete with Takeru about uh, the stretchy arms Ayakashi. Forget his exact name, but. Uh, they were both trying to see his attack, and uh, Chiaki was seeing how he had so much further to go compared to Takeru when Takeru was actually able to start predicting the attacks. Mm-hmm. So th- there were those those side character, but they were also in the vein of this is a side character trying to improve to support their lord. Yeah. Now, I think where Gokaiger improved upon that was that yeah, they were his crew, but they all had their individual reasons for wanting to fight the Zangyak, and they all grew under by working with Marvelous. They all began to break out of their normal selves. I I became much more independent and strong instead of just being the prim and proper princess. Doc was able to break free of just being a celebrity face and become someone whose intelligence was good for something. You know, Luca wasn't just a common thief anymore. And Joe was able to become his own man and not just be so connected to his old partner. And then Guy went from ascended fanboy to actually just ascended. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, like legit, like, from yeah. the beginning, at the beginning, sure, he was a fanboy who was like, oh, I get to use all the, su- the Super Sentai powers and was kind of a bumbling fool. And then he became, you know, competent eventually. Yeah, so they eat, so and and that and that was a great writing. And again, that's another reason why I love Narhisa Arakawa as a writer. Mm-hmm. He can make every character strong on their own while still being a support to the rest of the team. And then he used that to to give Marvelous the ultimate um, test, which is to actually teach him to fully trust again after a uh, you know Basco. Yeah, because <laughs> Marvelous had his crew in trusted them but still he, he really tried to do things by himself at least in the beginning a lot yeah and very much akin to how Shiba, uh, Takara Shiba did you know he was trying to do everything on his own and didn't want to trust in a team yep because he didn't he, he's like they they aren't raised like his excuse initially was that they weren't raised for full combat like he was and that he just didn't want to, want them to get hurt, which was, you know, commendable of him. Mm-hmm. Commendable, but not it's not what was needed. And it was yeah, it was it was misguided. Like it, it's 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 good intentions, but we all know where those lead. Yep. Yeah. Good intentions pave the way to hell. <laughs> or in this case, the Sanzu River. <laughs> <laughs> well, at the very least, if you're going down there, you might hear some good music. <laughs> and if it's a uh, if it's Romy Park singing, um, I'll just stay. I'm sorry. <laughs> I will just nah. stay. But we we need to we need to shift focus here and get back to why all of these little the, the little things that these shows did eventually culminated in what the idiot red tropes that we see in more recent Sentai, and the show that I think, in my honest opinion exemplifies everything wrong about this trope to a T 
Shuriken Sentai Ninja. Ninja. Oh, I, I God. Really oh. I, I, but, you, but you know what? I, I'm going to go one further with you there on Ninja. It's not an idiot red trope times one. It's an idiot red trope times six. Oh, yes. They're all yeah. idiot reds. Because the, they're, they're all because idiot, but, but you, cannot, you cannot tell me that Takaharu Igasaki is not the absolute biggest idiot of idiot reds in existence. No, his dad is. <laughs> <laughs> well, haven't you ever oh, heard, you know the, no. haven't you ever you heard the phrase, the I apple doesn't fall? We're actually going to fight you on that one. <laughs> yeah, we're going to fight you on that one because the dad was a, good, was a good guy. He was trying. No, as soon you as he became the guy who's worse? Grandpa! Yeah, Yoshitaka. <laughs> Oh. No, 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 no. The Grandpa, reason I say worst mentor in Sentai history. Here's the reason that I say that his father is the worst. As soon as his father became a red, unlocked all his, you know, power and became a red, he immediately lost all of his intelligence. He became an absolute moron at that point. Sure, it was only for like the last oh. couple episodes, but. Th Those guys were stupid from the outset. This was a smart guy dragged down to their level just by becoming a red. I think. I think. Now, I, I will admit one thing. The <sighs> there's sometimes it seems to me there's the, there's this curse going about where if a show has um, good suit designs, then the writing ends up being shit. That's, that's not always Obviously, true. that's not that's not always the case, but it definitely felt wow. like that in this case because I actually liked the suit designs for Ninja. We were saying that earlier. Yeah, the suit designs yeah, weren't they, bad. They, were, they weren't bad suit designs, and I mean the 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 shuriken swords were actually a pretty cool henshin device too. Oh yeah, yeah. the Ichibanzo. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, the Ichibanzos were. Yeah, there there are things about Ninja on a surface level that were actually really good. And one of the things I brought up earlier was the fact that all the mechs were varied. Like there wasn't a th there wasn't a strict motif to the mechs. I mean, you had a dragon, you had a humanoid, you had a dog, you had a train. I'm going to put and it a this way though. Dump truck too. I'm going to put it this way though. The uh, the katakuri, the mech, literally mech mechanics, the the mechanicals. Um, while individually they are really cool. Uh, all of the Gatais were shit. Yeah. <laughs> I see what they were going for, the idea of, of creating, like, an, a, a throne. Which, all, again, there's another emphasis on the red, where it was, like, the mech, the combined mechs were just a throne for the red to sit in. Which and they sounds like something I would do as a parody. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so would I, yeah. The, it wasn't until their final mechs where they actually combined into a full combined mech and worked together, which I could see what they were trying to go for with the theme of like a team fighting against each other most of the time with Red always being on top and then finally coming together as a team. But it didn't, the writing did not show that at all. And Takaharu was just no. too cheery all the goddamn time. Yeah. Uh, you you could not no bring him down. You could not bring him down. And. The thing, the thing is, when it, when it, you can ha you can have somebody who's ag who's aggressive who's aggressively positive, but you're but you're going to you're going to need to have eventual chinks in that in that armor. That's why I don't they, get that's why I don't get mad at say Godai for that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. He was always positive, but you could tell that he struggled. You could tell there were chinks in that armor. Hell, the current season, you know, Maji. Um, Kira Major, yeah. Uh, Kira Major. Kira True. Major. Mm -hmm. the, the Juru is a very positive guy. He's very much, when his imagination kicks in, he can be exuberant. Kira McKean! Kira McKean! No, I, I love it. Hey, trust me, we all love it. We all love it. But <laughs> when, when the chips get down, he's down there with them. He's not afraid to show that he doesn't always smile. Well, And that's and why we like him. Yeah. And the, and the biggest thing about Juru is... He smiles best when he's in his element, when he's exactly. using his imagination and also helping the team to shine. Otherwise, he's rather shy. Yeah, there's yeah. humanity to him. There's balance. There's nuance to him. That was the problem with Takaharu 
was that there was no nuance to him. Mm-hmm. What he was a full WYSIWYG. You, he was exuberant to a fault. To where he, and, like, even when things were at their worst, he was still. We can do, do it, it guys. I'm, I'm getting fired up. Fuck you. <sighs> you just get sick of it. Uh, I, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to say it because that actually was a catchy line. And that's and that's something we see in all three of the main examples we have here tonight is that all three of them very rarely, if ever, showed any signs of not being positive. They were always uplifting no matter how bad things got. And it just made the character feel very shallow and one-dimensional, which, you know, that's a failure of writing. Yes. Although, yeah, from, from, what I've, so. from what I've heard, the writer in question, who ended up writing another um, work that ended up being a punching bag for me personally... Is pr- is pretty much a yes man for for Mr. Shirakura, Ooh. which explains oh, so much. Yep, Kento Shimoyama. That is like the it's the reason why whenever I see his name pop up, I shudder because I know exactly what that means, and I've yet to be proven wrong. Mm-hmm. You know, we can only hope that one day, eventually, Toei will hear the opinions of the West louder. And understand that, yeah, Sentai isn't just for children. You know, whenever, whenever the whole, whenever the whole, the whole for for children or not for children all um, comes up, what I always, what I always find myself being reminded of is a episode of all things, an episode of Doctor Who. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yes, <laughs> I'm talking about fear her. Yep. The writer of that episode tried to use the It's for Kids as a defense and got completely eviscerated. As he should have. Because is the th- I ar- I argue that say- that saying that a- that a certain show is for kids or for adults in a- in a broad sense. I know that there's exceptions to this kind of thing. But just that statement itself I find to be highly ignorant at best and forced for the trees at worst. I find it almost... I see why at times. It's, a, it's, it's such a broad statement that it's almost... Um, it, it's, uh, it almost doesn't matter. It's a specious statement. It, it's, it, it's an excuse through and through. Whenever people it's use it. that, it is an excuse. If you are writing a kid's show, then you're writing for something like Nick Jr., Edutainment, yeah. Yeah, that's that's what you're basically trying to say. But if the show is not designed for Nick Jr. level audiences, you have to have more nuance to your writing or you will fail. Because the it's a kid's argument only need, only tells us, as full-grown adults who understand, that you're just a shit writer. Even kids, at the age that you're claiming you're targeting, know shit writing when they see it. Mm-hmm. And that... That actually reminds me of a blog comic written by a, a by a lady who uh, uh, immigrated to Japan and was watching Gaim when it was airing. Uh, I don't know if anybody else ever saw this blog comic. And I, I have such trouble finding it again. But she talks about how uh, the Yggdrasil uh, tr- uh, uh, machines are made to kill, you know, most of humanity, and the and the Helheim fruits are invading. And then she. Uh, her character in the comic turns towards the fourth wall and says, and this is a, a show aimed at this age group. And, uh, it, you know, to, to imply that it's aimed, aiming, aiming at children, quote unquote. And, and she was using it as an example of how um, what is meant for children is not always what we assume it to be. Yeah. yeah. Well, here's the, here's the big secret to young, to, to older children. We're, we're talking like the 9 to 13 age group, which is what mm-hmm. a lot of these shows are targeting, are, are usually targeting at. These they're kids, hitting puberty. They're about to hitting, hit puberty. Yeah. And what they like is usually what the older teens like. They like that kind of more mature storytelling. Yes, you have to have some limitations on what you can tell, because obviously you don't want it to be super gory or super sexual. 
obviously you have to avoid those. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean you have to write, you have to dumb down your characters. These kids are smarter than you give them credit for. I should know I have a 13-year-old daughter. Yeah. Trust me, yeah. this girl's smarter than you than you would think. She is. Because I don't know. Coming coming from you, Shades, I, I, I'm sure she's as sm exactly as smart as I think she would be. I'm going to take that as a compliment. Thank you. That is, that, no, that is a compliment. You're, you're already an intelligent individual yourself. It's going to pass down. Thank you. Thank you. And my wife is equally as intelligent and probably more so in many regards. So, yes, yeah, she's gotten quite a bit of brains from both of us. Well, so, but, yeah, that's what I'm saying is that a lot of kids are a lot smarter than you give them credit for. And they want more intelligent storytelling. I feel sorry I mean, for whoever her partner is and, and when she grows up and starts dating. <laughs> if, 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 if they cannot match her in, in intelligence, uh, she's going to have them wrapped up. All around her little finger. Oh, she <laughs> is. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be juicy to watch. <laughs> you know, I don't, I don't, I don't know what you're. I don't know what you're talking about. When I, I, I like, I like seeing fireworks. It's better. Oh, <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. I'm gonna enjoy those fireworks. For fuck's sake. <laughs> hey, hey, at least those fire, at least those fireworks will be go, will be going off more safely than a gender reveal party. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Damn you, monk! Don't remind me. Well, in you know my, what they say. In my defense, there's in my gender defense, reveal smoke. There's gender reveal fire. In in my defense, um, Mandalore did that joke at the end of his factorial review. Which, yes, he ended up calling it Cractorio, but I'm getting off track. But you know, yeah. I, I gotta say, dude, right. I actually just watched that review last night. <laughs> <sighs> uh, no. Um, anyway. The. The, the the trope, especially, you know, regarding our current example of Ninja, mm -hmm. the trope is an exact what you do not do when trying to teach children things. Because this is going to make the children that this is aiming at, 9 to 13, feel like someone is talking down at them. Which is... I wouldn't, which I wouldn't is be surprised if, if, that, if that was... That, if that was... Um, actually, actually, the case. Um, now, when it, now the other when it comes to when it comes to that, there's also there's also the fact that I look at the portrayal of of a care of of um Takaru, and I ha I have a bit of a I have a bit of a theory. Call it crackpot if you'd like. No, I'm not wearing a tinfoil hat because they don't make them in my size. I can barely find hats that fit my giant head as it is. Make your own. <laughs> oh yeah, let me just get, let me just pull a sewing machine out of my ass. <laughs> I mean, you're big enough. <laughs> fuck you, Xana. Just fuck you. <laughs> you walked into that one. Don't even get on me about it. Uh, sorry, Punk. I kind of have to agree with on that one. That was a like a rake moment. Yep. <laughs> I ha I I've had a I've had a bit of a theory <laughs> that um initially I cooked this up as a joke, but as I started thinking about it more, I started to realize maybe this was actually the case, and I started to get horrified. I mm -hmm. have to wonder if some executive was watching an episode of Naruto. And got the wrong ideas. Oh God! Oh, oh I can I see that happening. You'll get an eye. Watching, watching Please Naruto, and so only much. seeing the episodes where where Naruto is acting upbeat because he has to, and ignoring all the episodes where Naruto is depressed as shit because he's ex because he's ostracized. Yes. Uh. It's, I, oh part, of the, part of the reason I part of the reason I say this is because there were multiple times where they put where they pull the whole oh where they pull the whole thing of he lear he learns from combat instead instead of learning from practice, mm. which is the kind of thing you would see an idiot shonen protagonist try and do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's, oh, the, that's the reason that hurts why because it makes too much sense. Yeah. Not yeah, same here. Mm -hmm. I am, um, I'm sorely tempted to pull out the last of my scotch and just down it now. Thank you, Monk. <laughs> <laughs> here, pass well, me some of that, dude. Well, do well Doku's not here, so somebody's got to do the heavy drinking. 
<laughs> Pass me that shit, I, man. I, I, I've, yeah. I've tried Drink. to stop doing it. As a Scotsman, it's very easy to do that. <sighs> Hi, Kyoru. How are you doing? Hey. Yeah. <laughs> um, but it's so, it's something I could it's something I could very e I could very easily see. Especially, especially now. Granted, um, took now. Granted, over the there's been there's been only there's been a total of three attempt attempts at doing it at doing a ninja themed Sentai. Um, two of the two of the other two, of course, being much better. Um, yeah, Kaku Ranger and Hoodie Kanger were both fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Though it's funny. Looking back, thinking back to how those series were, both their reds were goofballs too. Mm -hmm. But her okay. Let, let's be let's be serious here. Hoodie Kanger, the entire initial crew was goofballs. You're not wrong. As someone and who's the, actually riffed on Hurricaneger, I can agree with that. And, but and the the Go again, Rangers tried to be serious. Tried being the operative word, but then they <laughs> got kind of dragged into it. That's my And then, point. of course, that's not even getting into Shudder Kinger. <laughs> yeah. Let's let's uh, let's let's not talk about Mister Baseball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that, this is a whole mess of things right there. But I mean, even Cocker Ranger, Sasuke was also a bit of a goof. In but Kaka he wasn't Ranger. the leader. No, but. We're just going off the reds for right now, yeah. Because that, you know, that's the idea. Is the idiot even if he's not the leader by design? You know, that was obviously Sadahime. He's still the red, and by all regards, he was the leader in that regard. Like red's always the leader. Period. Even if he's not. <laughs> I, I don't know. In Kaku Danger, she was, she was really the leader, and it was. It almost felt like how Pink was leader in Time Force. Yeah, time, I, I agree. I'm Ranger. just, I'm, mm -hmm. yeah. It's the point still stands. Anyway, getting back to the point I'm making here, we're still focusing on the Reds because they're the ones that would get this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And even Sasuke was a goof. He was a slacker. He just, he didn't, he didn't even care about. It took him a while for him to even give a damn. But the reason why both him and Hurricane Red were were and safe, Inosuke. were kept, and Inosuke were uh, good. Reds instead of Takaharu, who's an idiot, was that they developed, they grew, that so that by the end they were the almost the antithesis of what they started as. And the whole, especially Sasuke. The whole th when it comes to the whole thing of de of developing of developing characters in lo in long running series, um, this is some this is something that I've seen that I've seen multiple sides of the argument about over over the years. The thing that the thing that ends up coming to mind um, when it comes to this sort of thing is an interview that Ron Moore did with Elcars shortly after he quit Voyager. Because remember, he worked on on two episodes of Voyager and then decided to hang it up for about for the rest for the rest of the decade and a good chunk of the new millennium. Um, and. One of the and one of the things that he talked about was how was how um, Br was how um, Berman and Braga insisted on on not doing he on not doing heavy development because they wanted anybody to just jump to just jump in. And that is a mindset that I see that I see a lot in di in different um, tel in different television groups and it's uh, and their apologists. I would contend, however, that. That sort of that sort of mindset, when you're when you're dealing with a when you're dealing with a show that you want people to keep coming back to, doesn't hold up, and it holds no. up even less in 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 an age when serialization has become more and more popular. To the to yeah, the point when... where, much to much to the chagrin of folks like Easy, um. The whole, the whole uh, watch it, watch it in any order kind, kind of thing, is on is on the down is on the downslide. That it, it certainly happens. It just happens less often, and, and it especially happens that, less, off, less often with action series. 
Yeah, because and especially more so in the age of streaming, because now there is no need to just jump in and whatever episode just happens to be airing. You literally can just say, I'm going to start this series and you will start at the beginning because that's what's right there. Mm -hmm. So there's no need to have that kind of lack of development since any show can literally just be started from episode one when you're ready to watch it. The only the and only real the some... only real medium that the whole that the whole lack of development thing really works in, and I'd argue I'd argue it barely works even in this, is comic strips. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Is of how restricted they they are. And how and how like restricted in the sense of like where they're written and in terms of the in terms of the actual paper and where they can be found. Yeah. yeah. And even then, they have comic strips that do like long-term stories over several is over several day, weeks, days, you know, whatever. Looking at you, Prince Valiant. God, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Though admittedly that's <laughs> the really reason I never got into Prince Valiant because it's like what the hell's going on here? What have I missed? <laughs> you know? Yeah, you, you had to. You basically had to buy their serialization, the actual like serialized collections. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that that's a little different. But the, the point still stands is that in this day and age, there is no reason to not develop your characters when you're doing a show like Sentai because most people. I think the problem is is that I don't know. Up until very very recently, Toei hasn't exactly been streaming a lot of their stuff. No, they're only going back but... and they're only going back and streaming their old stuff that's already finished and isn't going to be airing anyway. But like the most recent thing they put out was a movie that is pretty much in its own continuity from the main series it was from. Even in Japan, the Toei Toei Sense of Fan Club is extremely new, and a lot of the time, even on their official YouTube channel, they go back and release old stuff. That is, that is sadly region locked. I I will yeah, note. But new- I will note on this that um, when it comes to when it comes to stre- when it comes to the streaming scene in Japan, that is still very bleeding edge for for um, for for uh, the Japanese audience. Like yeah, that I can understand. Um, even 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 um, New Japan World. For as for as much for as much as it offers, most of its subscribers are from outside Japan rather than in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. They they are not. They have not adapted to that idea yet because it hasn't really caught on yet. And until it does, the lot of the mindset they're going to have is based on what is airing on television. So they're going to keep doing things that way, which is why we keep seeing the same things popping up in Kamen Rider and Sentai. I'll bet you anything, the minute, the minute streaming starts becoming more prevalent in Japan and to the point where Toei starts streaming their new episodes up, you're going to start to see a shift. Might not happen right away, but it will happen. Well, especially because the West will be able to become a lot more involved at that point. Streaming is so much easier for the West to get into. And, for example, uh, the super the super hardcore Tokusatsu fan over here, uh, if they learned that Toei was going to have a stream, um, and even if they you know didn't understand Japanese or understood only very little, they'd go and they, they'd probably get a subscription to whatever streaming service Toei would co- would cook up and start watching, and they'd be able to give feedback from the West just as much as the Japanese give their feedback. And that's when you'd start to see the shift. Once once the yeah. West gets more oh, access. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we're already starting to see the early signs of that thanks to stuff like uh, Shout Factory doing their streaming with their with the old stuff. Like Little yeah. by little, you're going to start to see that start to come into play. And which yeah. is, I think that's why recently they put air, they aired the uh, Heisei Generations Forever movie in America. They're mm-hmm. testing that water. They're seeing what kind of feedback they can get from that. And they given are. how successful that actually was, I'm willing to bet things are going to start happening very soon. And it's and it's not just Shout Factory, yes. which is uh, a Western group helping bring that stuff over. Um, 
we're actually starting to see this sort of entire paradigm shift in Japanese entertainment in general. And I think part of it has to do with them finally catching up to realizing that streaming is a lot more accessible and a lot more profitable than TV is these days. And the other part of it is the realization that uh, audiences outside of Japan that are that in some cases are receiving these translated materials that come through the Western uh, businesses, Crunchyroll, Funny, etc., um, mm -hmm. are getting doctored materials. Because there's there's plenty of examples at this point of, of just the doctored anime through Crunchyroll and, and Funimation. We we have huge a huge backlist of that now, and I think Japan is starting to realize that whatever they intended is not getting is not what's getting here, and they're starting to hear that, and that's why we have um, Sunrise creating that channel with all of the with all of the the stuff the um, oh yeah with all of the anime in it and. Uh, a whole bunch of other places. It, it, it's, it's a it's a slow paradigm shift, but uh, Toei will do it too, or Toei will fall behind. And Toei does not like to fall behind. No, <laughs> and mm -hmm. give, and um, I I think the only I think the only th the only th the only thing that might that might put a da that might put a damper on that is the relationship that they have with TV Asahi, because cute cute yeah. mind. If it if it weren't for TV Asahi going going over Shirakura, Kamen Rider would not have gone past Agito. Yeah, that if that memo wasn't written, Agito would have been the series finale. Well, I'm very glad that Agito was not the series finale because we've had some amazing Kamen Riders. Oh, so. as as are we as are we yeah. all. But getting back getting back to the matter at hand. Um, when it comes to the, when it comes to the whole notion of, um, as I mentioned early on, Toei not lear not um, learning the right lessons. I want I want to use that to se to um, to seg to segue into the third pillar we haven't talked about in the in this little unholy trinity of. Um, of oh of God! I think and, I don't know who you're about to bring up now. I need uh, to yeah. set the stage uh, a little bit, for whatever reason, and this is one of this is one of those things that is high, that is high up on my list. That if I that if by some miracle I ever meet um, Sanjo, I am going to have to ask him about this, that and the whole MD guys thing. But I already made that clear. <laughs> so we have you have an author, you have a writer who has self-admitted on multiple occasions that he's not good at handling large casts because he likes to give individual detail to each, to each character that he has. And you give him a Sentai team. Nope. Hmm? Hmm? I am not familiar with this name. Give a minute. Huh. There, there's a request, I'm guessing. Yeah. I can, I'm getting an impression as well. Yeah. Hmm. Anyway. But, what, but you get, you, you go with that, and you, and you, and you give him a ten-member team. Now, nope, twelve member team. No, I'm and no. then no, when that one yeah. when that one manages to do reasonably well, you have the mindset of, hey, this one worked well because we had such a large cast. Let's make it even bigger. <sighs> yeah. So yeah. let's talk sure. about Lucky. Yep, I knew it. Like no, lucky, 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 Lucky is a definite idiot. Red. Oh no, he is. Is. Yeah. If yeah. I labeled my. If I labeled my intimate relation with Lucky from from Q Ranger, we'd be here until Christmas. I mean, let's just let's, let's just remember he gets all of the upgrades, catches his his uh, <laughs> catches his transformation trinket from a literal meteorite, <laughs> and um, <sighs> yeah, there's things. There's just too many things. 
And we have a do we have a late edition with a Doku being late and gay once again. <laughs> I, I was supposed to be replacing Doku with my lateness. Damn it, Doku! You have to out Doku. I have, a, out I have a reason this time. Me. He has a yeah, reason. You have, have, you have reason. an understandable reason. We do, we're not going to go into it. Yeah. You Fair have enough. an understandable anyway. reason. We're going to leave it. Anyway. What, anyway. what did I What did I miss? Everything. Uh, we're on the third of our unholy trinity of Sentai. Oh. Um, Q Ranger. Uchu Sentai. Q Ranger. I'm, oh, I'm not going to lie. Ranger's done. I'm going to I'm going to I'm not going to lie. Oh, I uh man. I really oh. I really enjoyed Q Ranger as a guilty pleasure. Yeah, See, here's the thing. Guilty. Here, here's the thing. <laughs> I've said this many a times on my own show, but simply put, if you were to take Lucky out of the picture completely and just change the story to not include him, the series would be ten times better for it. Agreed. Yeah. Because every yeah. other aspect of Q Ranger was actually pretty good. Yeah, like Honestly, gave, us one I, of, I liked... gave us one of Maddie's favorite memes in cha in Championship Bowl. <laughs> Macho Champ oh! is near you. Yeah. Oh, the yeah, the Macho Champ is ready to kick some ass. Which um, ah uh, yes, I'm pretty sure he. It's this is one of those situations where um, I count my lucky stars that you guys don't um, riff riff on Ultraman as 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 much. Oh <laughs> God, if, Titus! If, if, if you guys had gotten a hold of Titus, he would not stop. He would. Yeah, Maddie would not stop. Let, no, let's, I got let's just remember that that uh, that Champ was was voiced by uh, by the amazing Akio Otsuka. Um, oh yeah. We 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 love Akio Otsuka in this house. Uh, apparently, no, I, I didn't realize this. I probably have to rewatch some of the episodes of Common Rider Saber. Um, he's the Seiken Sword Driver and the Wonder Ride books, as well as the narrator. Yes, yes he, is. he is. I he knew is. he was the narrator. But, Trust but, but, me, chat brought that. Our chat brought that up earlier today because we just watched episode one earlier this earlier this evening. But that here's 3D, the thing: that three D. That's uh, that's a well, that's a that, that's a conversation for a much different time. Yeah. Let, yes. Let's, yes, um, yes. It is. Let's keep let's keep on track. Yeah. When it comes now, when it okay, I said I um I said I, I said I was gonna ask this in the in the past, and I, f I figured I I figured I'd um and I may I may have done this so, and I found out why Doku dropped um cat problems. Yeah, I saw that. Ah. Um. So those of those of you who have seen me when I when I invade RV talks on occasion. Are familiar with the little game I like to play. Ah, this, this little, I know what you're talking. This about. little game, and if you if you've got the button, it might be a good time to. It might, might be a good. Time I to was use it. just looking, making sure I was. I, I know I have it in here somewhere, because mm -hmm. I know I saved that one. Or did I not save? Ah, here it is. Shall I? This is a game that I shamelessly stole from Solo Monster and did my own spin on it. And good brother Shades, take it away. And now it's time to decide what is trash and what is treasure. It's time for buy or sell. It's been a while since we've done one of these. Yeah. yeah. Yes. <sighs> now I want to make clear that the way this the way this ends up working is you've got you've got two options. You've got two options. You've got to buy on one and sell on the other. No exceptions. You can you cannot do an app you. Unless it's unless it's way too apples to oranges, you cannot do an abstain. You've got you've got to pick one. You've got to drop the other. That's the way okay. this works. Taking that into account, I want I want to first ask you, buy or sell. Lucky. And, leftovers, as he's been nicknamed. Who are you buying? Who are you selling? Leftovers as he's been nicknamed? Yeah. Takaharu. That's what uh, we call I know. leftover. I know. But uh, here is my answer for you. Because I have had, this is something I have had thought about many a times because this question has come up on my end as well. My buy goes to Lucky. And I'll explain why. Both are idiots. Both get a bulk of the power ups. And both 
are constantly proven are proven right when they should absolutely be wrong. There is one key difference that I think puts Lucky just slightly above Takahara. And that is the fact <laughs> and that is the fact that at the very minimum Lucky actually gives somewhat of a damn about his team. Yeah. He does, uh, which was especially shown in Q Ranger vs. Space Squad. Yeah, a movie that actually was written by someone competent. Mm -hmm. And sorry about dropping out there, guys. Uh, I have a cat. No, you're fine. Yeah, we heard. We heard. All right, so Doku, let, let, let's let's throw you into this. Buy or sell? Takaharu from Ninja or Lucky from Q Ranger? Oh. Uh... Lucky. Care to explain I why? This... <laughs> I don't have a good reason why. Just I, I, I don't, I don't like that question. I don't. <laughs> I don't know which one to. I don't know which one I actually want to pick. The. That's why and... it's but. That's the whole point of buy or sell. It's my, it's my, co it's my personal Kobayashi Maru. <laughs> uh, I, I hate both of you. Uh, <laughs> Love you too. See, I answered this, and I gave it, a, I gave a, a reasoning for my answer. And to be blunt, my reasoning is very simple. I, I just like, I like Lucky more, and I, I prefer that character. The, so my reason is purely personal. Actually, I think I can follow. I think I can follow you up on this, because while Lucky was very exuberant and to a fault, there were minute chinks in his armor. They were very, very few and very far between, but they were there. Nothing like that existed with Takaharu. He was no. always annoyingly in your face, positive. So, uh, uh, oh, I, I guess I'll just follow up on that one real quick. I, I, I liked the character more for that reason because I felt like the character somewhat had relatability. If if you're really gonna force me to think about it, <laughs> and I, I I understand the character was still, yeah, not Locked exactly, in. not exactly something that you would say is uh, uh how do I put it? Good. Very dangerously close to a Gary Stu. Yeah, that yeah, works too. yeah. That works too. It, it wasn't, it wasn't the most relatable character in the world, but it, it still, it Lucky still had some relatability. So I, I, yeah, I find, it, it, I find it, that, I find that something I can get behind. It goes back to my reasoning, what I mentioned earlier, since you weren't here to hear this. The one key aspect between the two that I think gives Lucky the buy is that even if it wasn't always perfect, it was very clear he gave a shit about his team. He oh, tried he to lift them up. He tried to help them. Whereas the whole aspect of the ninjas fighting against each other to become the last ninja caused Takaharu to oftentimes kind of shut them down when he should well, have been lifting them up. Well, and luck Lucky felt like a like a character, like right? the lucky didn't feel like just oh yep yeah, we're you're, you're going to be the uh, Deus Ex Machina. I, lucky, lucky was deeper than a puddle. Yes, he was. Not yeah. by much, but deeper than a puddle. <laughs> Again, two not... puddles. He's two puddles deep. Yeah, <laughs> granted, He's granted. I um, I will, I will note that the Orion upgrade is probably the ugliest looking upgrade I have ever seen. It is the worst upgrade ever in Sentai. Not only because it looked ugly as shit, but again, it made him so goddamn OP, it's unbelievable because it's he could literally squad. summon every, he, he could literally summon everyone else's weapons as Flutter said, like Kiwami Arms from Guy. Yeah, but Kiwami but even Arms worse. was actually good. Yeah, Kiwami Arms made sense because it was a culmination of everything the Helheim Force was about. It was, he was supposed to be God. So it made sense he would have God-like power. 
But oh, I just I just realized something. Uh oh. Oh no. It's it's the same it's the same character concept as uh uh oh what's his name Asahai the uh the dude from uh the blue tournament in Food Wars. Oh. You, give me your uh, cooking utensils and I take all of your powers. Like no. Stop oh it. that oh I the, remember the, that fucker the that fake, guy the, the fake the fake side yeah, that bastard Saiba that's remember. it. The fake Saiba, the one who who says he's a son of Saiba Joichiro but isn't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about. Oh, it's oh the yeah, same yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's the, the same one who, character. Who, yeah. The only difference is, no. is that that fake Saiba was actually a villain, whereas here he's the main hero. Yeah. He, no, he was a villain who thought he was the hero. That was the worst part. He thought that he was the MC of his story. Yeah. But it was yeah, Saiba all along. Yeah. They they actually go out of their way to to say Explain that. that. Yeah. Saiba's was the hero. It's like no, no, he's not. We know it's Soma. Like please stop. Yeah. It's um, it, it is the same character. The character themselves has no agency. They they have no personal development other than like I have to defeat. I have to defeat my rival. No, please stop. No, please stop. Ugh. So. Uh, so with with my uh, buy or sell here, Monk, um, I'm going to also say buy Lucky. Uh, for first of all, as I said, uh, Q Danger is somewhat of a uh, guilty pleasure for me. I enjoyed watching the show, mm -hmm. um, even with Lucky being Lucky. No, but on top of that, and keeping Shade's idea of he actually tried to bring up the rest of the team in mind, it's more the fact that his team was competent. And not a bunch of other bumbling idiot reds by any other name. Nin Ninja, as I already stated, you don't have one idiot red. You have six. Every one of them. All of them. All trying to become last ninja. They're all idiot reds. Every one of them. But you've only got one here. It's a matter of, of quantity and quality. You've got a whole bunch of bad quality sure. with Nin Ninja and at least only a little bit of bad quality with Q Danger because he gets he gets his bad quality gets diluted out amongst the other 11 team members also um per personal personal favorite thing about uh Q Danger is the um the fact that Japanese pun uh pun smithing was at its peak here the Seiza blasters being the the constellation blasters, but it's also Seiza change, Seiza change. Oh yeah, that that yeah. was my yeah, favorite goddamn pun in the entire like the last five or six series. That was my favorite pun because I love a good Japanese pun. Japanese word, yeah, play. exactly. It's fun. And. When it comes, already. When now, when it comes to um, Cure Cure Ranger, even I think it. I think it's all. Even though it sounds like we've been damning Lucky with faint praise, there's still there's still the factor that, as even with all those redeeming qualities, there's still the factor that. He that um he would not that he would that um. That the story would be better off if he wasn't there, which um might make a very which veers a little close into um the bad version of It's a Wonderful Life, i.e. the most overrated Christmas movie of all time. Yeah, but at least the story would still be good if he weren't there. You can't fix Ninja's story. No, the entire premise of the story is fucked from the beginning. Mm -hmm. If any of you say that Die Hard is not the best Christmas movie of all time, you're dead to me. <laughs> oh, you don't worry about me. I'm good. <clears throat> I agree. The Witcher <laughs> is the greatest <laughs> Christmas series of all time, Doku. Eat it. Uh, Ooh. <laughs> I'm not talking about series. I'm talking about movie. I mean, we could talk about Home Alone as well, but but let, let me let me let me put it this way: The Witcher is eight hours. It might as well be a feature length film or three. Uh, so you're better off going with the argument of three, not just one. Anyway, real. <laughs> back to sanity, relatively. 
Sorality. <laughs> what the hell is that? I'm looking at the litmus sanity. paper here. Um, the litmus paper says that you've got a sanity pH of one, whereas we're at a sanity pH of zero. There's not much difference. I'm wondering where you got the paper from. It's in my hand. It's just in the paper. <laughs> <Whatever. laughs> it exactly. doesn't exist. No, it does. Uh, it's right here. Tell me if you go Malkavian on your ass. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but e but even even with that, um, I do under I do understand why, um, why so why several people still still gravitate to Q to uh, Q Ranger even with that. But it it feels it feels like um. It feels like Q Ranger was kind of a nadir of a lot of problems that have been building for a long time, and I think, I think the big issue is the fact that for how long now Naruhisa Arakawa is currently is currently writing um, Kira Major, but how long has it been since the last time he was heavily involved in a series? A Kira Ranger. Okay, yeah. let me let me um let me rephrase that. How long since an since an official involvement? How hey, dare you? He go Kaiser. Go Kaiser. And what year did what year did Go Kaiser come out? Twenty eleven. Nine ye nine years. And the vibe, that, the yeah. vibe that I end up get, the vibe that I end up getting from a lot of the behind the scenes stories that I've heard, that I've heard from various sources, is that there isn't a cons there isn't a consistent voice in that office. That's why I, that's why I called it the, the drunken sailor because when when I look at when I look at common writer post. Um, in the post double era and even going into the Rewa era as we currently are there is a very clear direction as far as the portrayal of protagonists the portrayal of enemies and the like with um mm -hmm. with something like super sentai there there's kind it doesn't it's not a full on case of this but it does lean in the direction of too many attempts to deconstruct a formula which doing that too many times is going to hurt your idea. Yeah. It's going to hurt your idea because what you're doing is you're now putting together disparate elements that have nothing to do with each other. You are, you, yeah. You, you've broken everything down to its base archetypes, sure, but some archetypes are mutually exclusive, and now you're trying to shove them all together in one. Yeah, that mm -hmm. that's where that's that's that ends up being part of the issue now. Again, this is the thing that makes this such a complex issue is the fact that there's not one thing that you can pin this on. It's a culmination of multiple um, puzzle pieces. Whether whether it be whether it be the revolving door of um, ma of management, the ho the whole issue of what our target audience is, or the issue or the issue of back adaptation when. When um the when those filthy Americans ended up outdoing them, yeah. uh, I say I say as a filthy American. Exactly. <laughs> I I don't know. I don't think there's going to be a, a back adaptation of a uh, of Q Ranger. It's going to be a long time before Hasbro even touches this one. I don't. It, it is. When I when I refer to back adaptation, what I'm I'm not referring to to that to what you guys are going down that particular rabbit hole with. I'm more referring to tr to trying to adapt back certain storytelling styles, but not ha but not having the proper context because. This is the reason why tr trying to do the comparison game between Super Sentai and Power Rangers might have worked 20 years ago, doesn't work as much now because they've established very different identities from each other. Yeah. And oh, yeah, I'm, they have. I'm not sure how much I... Uh, 
Uh, I'm not sure I, I really like to make that comparison even 20 years ago. Um, sure, you can, for example, even less than 20 years ago, but again, with the whole Decker Ranger SPD comparison, it's a closer comparison than, say, uh, Ninja Steel and Nin Ninja. Well, that's the Neo Saban era, and that has a host of other problems. Oh, yeah. It does. We oh, can do a no, whole episode oh. on that, that bullshit. No, no. I, if there is ever an episode where you guys cover Neo Saban, you can, the, you can count me out. I will not discuss Neo Saban. I don't want to think <laughs> about it. It makes me, it makes me cry. I'm not going to do it. How do you think we feel? We had to do a whole podcast starting, uh, starting in the second season of that, covering the whole fucking thing. So I know next exactly Sunday, how you feel. That's why I'm going to avoid those feelings. So next Sunday we're going to be uh, discussing Neo Saban. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, next Sunday I won't be here anyway, so that'd be perfect timing because yes, I'm going to be attending Sunday. the birthday. No, I know, Mike. He won't do that. He I know. That. He won't do I, two in a row. I, I have I have no I have no desire to do double dipping that quickly. Well, and even then, I actually won't be here next Sunday. I have a friend who's going to have a birthday, and I'm going to attend her stream for 12 hours. Ah, nice. Oh, you, you should force her to listen to uh, IIA Intensifies for all 12 hours of it. Oh, God. <laughs> no, there's there there are better challenges, such as the fact that she has a hype wheel that she's going to be spinning every time someone subs or puts in bits. And... Uh, one of the things on there is eat the mystery food, and if she can't eat all of the mystery food, she has to wear it. Oh god! Oh, oh right. god! Yeah, honestly, okay. I, I okay. Go- yeah, we're good. Yeah. <laughs> Personally, I would have I would have gone with um with eat a bo- with a eat a um jelly bean out of a bean boozled box. Oh god! No, don't do that. <laughs> no. That's a really bad idea. No. I I no. might or might not know from personal experience. No. Same. Same. So, there's, there's a lot of things. Like she's she's gonna get a speech jammer so that she has to try and talk through a speech jammer as part of as one of the challenges that can be spun on the board. There's a there's it's gonna be a fun time. Yeah. Okay, that's very interesting. But anyway. back on track. When it, but when it comes to when it comes when it comes when it comes to the no the notion of um. Of of over deconstruction. That's what I want to focus on with the whole drunken sailor thing because there definitely there definitely seem there uh, definitely seems to be a bit of overthinking about and looking for a kind of magic bullet as far as what's going to work with um, Super Sentai because when with you with the series that he did after Go Kaiger, you kind of see them trying trying to fig trying to figure out what. What can we do? What can we do to have that same level of success without relying on an anniversary series? Which, of course, Go Kaiser was, and that definitely helped it. Um, mm-hmm. But in the in the process, what they ended up doing over the years was th- was throwing darts around. Because now, remind me of the chronology. What came after Go Kaiser? Go Busters. After Go Kaiser. Go Busters. Go Busters. Yeah, yeah. Go Busters. and with Go Busters, they decided to go back to the whole experiment of having a smaller team of only of only um three, and having and having two extras. Um, one of the, one of them who repeatedly gets his ass kicked by his partner. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> go Busters was good. Um, yeah, I'm but fine. unfortunately, it wasn't good enough to be popular in Japan. Japan, it suffered to the point where they actually tra- changed out the writer halfway through. It probably it probably didn't help that the writer it, the that uh, one of the ma- one of the major writers was someone who is one of my personal punching bags. Oh yeah, Kobayashi. And I I know what everybody says when I bring this up, but Co- but Kobayashi did great did great stuff with Time Ranger and, and a lot of other series in the nineties, and and was responsible for the for uh, Stardust Crusaders as far as its anime adaptation. That's not applicable. Stardust no, Crusaders no, is not, not applicable no, is because not. she because that wasn't her work. She was just adapting um, someone else's. Yeah, and here's my argument: two things. One, admittedly, Go Busters was one of her better works, in my honest opinion. I thought it was a great series. And to anyone who says, "Oh, she did great work in the '90s," yeah, but as early as the 2000s, she started to show cracks. And I can bring it up in one simple name. 
Common Rider Ryuki. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's all, the. I um, I don't have any, I don't have any evidence of this, but I have to wonder if she has a bit of resentment over the fact that Metal Heroes ended ended up going by the wayside and effectively got absorbed into Toei's umbrella. I'm wondering that myself too. Oh, it's almost obvious because, like, again, if you look back at Ryuki, her and um. Inoue, Toshiki Ino. yeah. To no, Toshiki Inoue clashed hard on Ryuki. That's the reason uh -huh. why Ryuki is as bad as it is, because those two did not get along <laughs> at no. all. Now, are, are we are we talk are we talking getting getting dangerously close to cat fights? I would not be surprised. If we like, weren't there already, but you can clearly see that. Like whatever that when like from episode to episode, characters and story plots would be completely almost one eighty from each other because of who depending on who was writing it. That's how very different those two are from each other, and this carries on even today. As when Kobayashi was writing O's, for whatever reason, when the when Movie War Core came out. They tapped into a to write the O's part of that movie, which is why and it sucked. Yeah, and yeah, that was terrible. Ugh. But those two still hate each other. Yeah, they do. I'm just sitting here being Kazuhira Miller right now. <laughs> <laughs> why are we but here yeah, that... just to suffer? But, <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> when it comes when it comes to um this when it and um to the, to that end to kind to kind of to kind of go with where, with where I was going with this so a, after gobusters and after after the revolving door um issues that it had what was next which oh by the way actually I should comment on that because the secondary writer the one that basically took over for most a lot of gobusters was Nobuhiro Mori who would later go on to be the head writer for Q Ranger? Yeah, but with Q Ranger, it's clear that it's a too many cooks in the kitchen type of situation. With how many times certain episodes would switch writers? Anyway, but after to yeah. after Ghostbusters, to Q Ranger. Nope, no. Oh wait, no, Q Ranger, Q Ranger. Yeah, yeah. Ranger, which which of course we've talked about and which and which did extremely which did extremely well and they ended up learning the wrong lessons from that and yeah, what came learned, after that took huger that is so huger yes and that and then and then they started applying those wrong lessons into into huger and everything that and ninja and q and q ranger well the reason Zuoger was between ninja and q ranger so Zuoger is the outlier. It is. Yeah. Yeah. It is. Yeah. I'm going to be honest. I I liked the characters of Zuoger, but I didn't like the mechs. I didn't like the mechs. They were a different thing. Yeah, they were acquired taste, admittedly. I uh -huh. you know they look kind of silly, but and even even Zuoger had some of the issues with the not the idiot red, but the dominant red. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he got all the power ups. He got three of them, or well, yeah. two of them. Technically. Now, now, granted, or granted, I still, one. I still like Yamato as a care as a character. Oh yeah, super cool guy. Oh fuck yeah, I consider him the Carter Grace of Super Sentai. Um, but but the but the fact still stands. And the reason why I'm going with the reason why I'm going with these series that happened after Arakawa's Arakawa's exit is. With, with, with the stuff with a lot of those cases, they were experimenting with things like mech design, things like how um things like how villains would work, things like the um so the size of teams, but there was never really a bible to fall back on. No, there wasn't. I agree. Um, not to mention they were also not to mention they were also doing the whole thing of uh, some teams getting personal weapons and some not. Like, that like just with... that just furthers my point. Yeah. You. 
I'll, to, to, use a, to use a point of comparison, let's, let's, look at a, let's look at a few other long-running tokusatsu series that do have a Bible in, th- in this sense. Kamen Rider has a series Bible. May- maybe, not a, maybe not in the physical sense, but definitely in the um, psychological sense. Oh, yeah. yeah. You're, al- you're, you're always go- you're, you're always You can always rely on certain motifs that are going to be in a Kamen Rider series, period. Some things may change, but there's a few pillars that will always remain constant. The same mm-hmm. thing applies with Ultraman. Even w- even with oh, the whole, oh, yeah. even if the whole relying on past pa- relying on past um, Ultraman thing is a little bit annoying for me, um, there are motifs that Ultraman has ha- has had for decades that it is going to maintain. Yup. Mm-hmm. And the third of which, which um, I do hope to dedicate a whole episode to, of Geek Watch to. Is Garo. When it comes to Garo, Ooh. you have a very strong understanding oh of God. what you're going to be expecting, what to expect, even when they did the whole split timeline thing. With, yeah, the whole split continuity, yeah. As, as, and with, and with those, if, if we, if I found out that there was, if, that there was going to be a new, a yeah, new full season of a yeah, Gar- of a Garo series in a continuity. There are certain th- there are certain things I could expect from it, even if it was doing a full on soft reboot and doing a third continuity, or rather fourth if you want to get pedantic. <laughs> there are th- there are things that I'm that I'm going to be expecting, and even when it even even though I prefer the live action stuff to the anime. The the anime still remained a degree of consistency with with those pillars as well, and that's oh yeah, the, the Garo anime has actually been has actually been pretty good, and that's that's the key that I want to focus on. Even even with the addition of Rider to Garo. A writer to do consecutive series it was was with the nut with it was with two other series that he worked on Ava Ranger and Decker Ranger. Mm-hmm. And it's in it's it's in now I I know that some might that there's the off there's the counter argument that being being less being less predictable should be a good thing right not necessarily. There is a certain power in expectations that is sorely undervalued. Simply, the simple idea is that there are some elements that you can be unpredictable with. You can change things up here and there. But there should always be some areas where you must remain consistent to be considered in the same franchise. Mm-hmm. It's just like right. with, doc, you know, with something like Doctor Who. You know, each doctor has very different has diff- has a lot of differences in terms of tone, in terms of how the character, how the doctor is, what kind of companions they'll have. But there are some key aspects that do not change, and if they do, the whole thing will fall apart. Actually, there's a there's a really good example of this, and if if you guys haven't watched it, uh, spoilers. HX arrows. Have, have oh, any of you that? I have. I have not. Now I haven't been watching it weekly since I'm waiting for the dub to finish. So I'm. I'm not going to give away the plot of the show. What I will 
what I will say is a, in the intro, it shows characters having having a certain a uh, certain outfit. And and you guys know anime intros uh, don't exactly always follow the plot. In this instance, no, no. in this instance, no, it actually does. And the outfits that you see in the intro are an actual plot point. So they are. Yeah, sometimes predictability is not necessarily a bad thing if you execute it properly. True. To, and that's that's the reason everybody laughed. Is wait a second the the the, the outfits that they're wearing from the intro are actual an actual thing. They're they're actually going to use that as a plot point. Yes, yes, they are. That's a good thing. It's not bad. It's it all boils down to the execution. It does. That is true. Oh, no. by the way, you should all go watch that show because sexy yeah. Power Rangers. <laughs> yeah. Also, Cure, I have to do this to you. Yes, sir. <laughs> You're fluttering. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> now, when it and that now when it comes to those um when it comes when it comes to those diff those different um pillars. This is the reason why I've always harped on the concept of a series Bible, which plenty of long-running television series actually do have. Um, and, e and even some that were, le that were less long-running. I, I do know for a fact that um, Goosebumps and Are You Afraid of the Dark had them. Um, now granted, I, <laughs> it's a bit odd that those series of all things would have a, ser would have a series Bible because... The whole the whole gimmick with with those particular shows were cases where you could get away with a lot with a lot more and didn't need to be that level of consistent. You know, yeah. thought just occurred to me. Shoot. Yeah. What if Gokaiger is a lot more of the problem than maybe we all realized? Hear me out. Gokaiger being an anniversary series. What it's after that where everything where all these experiments and all these changes started. Sure, elements of them had happened before, but things had always been at least somewhat consistent up until Go Wasn't there? Wasn't there? Yeah, you're what, right. What if Toei used Go very much the same way that they did with Decade in Common Rider? They used it to culminate everything from Super Sentai up until that point, and then went from there to start fresh. But much like Common Rider did in the 2000s, but when it was trying to, or after Ryuki, they didn't know what to do with it because they had lost all the basics they started with. So I think the, the problem there is is that uh, is that Common Rider quickly found its footing again. Super oh, Sentai yeah. still hasn't. Yeah, that's and because Common has... Rider needed Decade to culminate all the problems of the Heisei era so that it could start fresh with someone who understood what Common Rider was. The problem here is that by starting fresh with somebody who didn't really have as firm a grasp on what Sentai is and someone who wanted to do their own thing, they had accidentally sent a tone of do whatever, and that's where things started to go wrong. Uh, oh, correct me if I'm wrong on this one. So you're basically making the argument of if it's not broke, don't fix it. At the same time, if you're going to work on a project, it don't make it into something that it isn't. Yeah, pretty much. By, by you know, as much as we love Go Busters, by handing by giving the next season to Kobayashi, who, as far as I know, has never done Sentai prior to this. No, she took it. In a, no, yeah, she, she had taken in. Hmm? She had done Sentai before. She wrote Kingdom Man, Time Ranger, and, and Shinkenger. Okay, uh, so then that kind of hurts my theory a little bit, admittedly. However, but maybe, however, that was 
however, that's like a ten, that's like a ten year difference at that point. And then, that is, yeah, yeah. It, some. it changed a lot True. in the burnout and everything. But what my point is is that maybe it was somebody else above her or somebody else that had created a tone. And again, like you said, because Arakawa had stepped down and was doing other things, maybe they had created a tone where they didn't know what to do because they had pretty much flushed everything down and started fresh. Well, I would make the argument that if you're going to if you're going to be working within a certain franchise or a certain genre you should have a, a good understanding of what for lack of a better term what type of flavor the audience is expecting and if you can't deliver that it um, I'm not buying barbecue because I want uh, because I want uh, um, more specifically, I'm not buying Memphis barbecue, uh, barbecue because I want Texas barbecue. I expect a certain flavor out of something. Yeah, and I think that's what it was. I think they decided to change the formula after Go Kaiser because they figured, hey, you know what? We've done the anniversary. Let's do something new. Let's do something completely new. Not realizing that they're not they they're messing with stuff they shouldn't be because that's Toei in a nutshell is what they like to do. And now. They've got themselves in. They've got themselves out of a hole they can't dig out of, and that's probably why they brought Arakawa back because they're like, okay, we need to get ourselves out of this shit. More, more than likely, yeah. Yeah, I can see that. Adding to the point that yeah, Arakawa was a hail mary play. Mm-hmm. And I, I actually agree with Shades on this one because when when you look at certain genres, say like, I'm. I'm not looking at a. I'm not gonna look at something like John Carpenter's The Thing, because I want a commentary on, yeah, social constructs. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna be watching yep. John guys John are being Carpenter's. I'm being called away somewhere else. So, see you guys. Later. Later, Flutter. All right, have Peace. a good one, dude. All right. Oops. Oops. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, oops. Oh. Ugh. Buttons at the bottom, man. I know. <laughs> but yeah, if, again, if I'm if I'm watching John Carpenter's They Live, I'm not watching They Live because I'm expecting a movie like The Thing. It, you expect a certain type of tone and certain type of flavor, certain type of uh, presentation. So, it, you know, sort of like when I watch uh, SSSS Gridman. I'm not looking for Gundam. I, I know there's Kaiju. I know there's Mecha, but I'm not watching it because I think it's going to be Gundam. I'm also not watching it because I think it's going to be uh, Macross. Um, I'm watching. I'm watching something like that for a very particular reason, because I know, I know what type of style and what type, uh, what type of story I'm going to get. And. To the to that particular end, the um, are any of you familiar with the Harv Bennett story? Rings a bell. I might have heard this before. Harv That's Bennett very, was but... the producer for um, Star Trek II: The Wrath of Khan. Okay. And ah, yes. Now I know we're going with this. Up until up until that mm. point, he had not seen a single episode of Star Trek. In preparation for stepping on his producer, and he took he, and he was given the job because he had a reputation for maintaining a budget, which the first movie had a problem with. Among he, other things. Yeah. He went and watched the entire original series and was taking notes throughout. Wow, that's some timing. <laughs> Your jiggly pup has evolved. Hey, what the fuck, Zelda? That's a uh, that's that's my text tone telling me that uh, well, some bullshit just happened. That's all. Fair enough, but still, I'd say, oh, wow, I think we found the secret. He probably nah. did. Damn it, Gannon! What do you need now? <laughs> he Moving ate my on. food before it could make it to me. Moving uh, on. The point the the point is is that is that. You didn't. You didn't have an. You, when it comes, when it comes to, 
there's an understandable degree of wanting to change of wanting to change up formulas to an extent. But whenever you enact any sort of change, you need to answer you need to answer the question why. Um and it, when it comes now I will use the th the um change to a three team sentai in the case of go busters as my example and i'm going and i'm going to use geki ranger as a point of comparison with this when it came to when it came to geki ranger using a three, using a three team sentai at the at the start at the very least the core reason given is that there is that when it came to how it described Juken, there were three pillars. And those three characters were embodiments of, the, of one of those three pillars. And that is pretty consistent throughout, even to the point where in order to, in order to get their unlock, they had to, they had to confront their worst part of that, tri of that trinity. What is the reason... That Go Busters goes with a three goes with a three teams a three person team. Well, again, as as long as it makes sense for for the way that you frame the story, it, it you can you can utilize creative liberty if it makes sense for the story that you're presenting. That's what I'm getting at. Yeah, I mean, the, if the story that if it doesn't, for, yeah. It falls apart. The story that they told was that the reason why those three specifically could be the only ones to do it, where they were the only three involved in the experiment that led to uh, the creation of... Um... Oh, I forget his name. <laughs> I forget Boglass. his name. Mm -hmm. Boglass. They were the only ones that had been somewhat digit had been given that kind of digital ability. Nobody else could use that power but them. Again, why? <laughs> <laughs> and the only reason Jin and Jay were able to join the team was because of Jin's little backup thing that he created for himself. That it was a it, it was a digital avatar, and Jay was a buddy Roy. Yeah. Well, I guess so if we're only... sorry, Chase, go ahead. That do that doesn't that doesn't that touches on the question, but it doesn't full on answer it. No, I agree. I agree. I'm just trying to help us get to that point. Mm -hmm. But I guess the issue here would be it's it's twofold. Not only do you have to maintain the same type of uh, the same type of style, the same type of flavor, whatever you want to call it, uh, depending on whatever genre you're working within, but you also have to maintain the idea that, or not the idea, but uh, the story along with the characters, it has to make sense. So you have to balance those two aspects where okay, you have you have three characters instead of five. Okay, why are there three? Well, you have to focus on you have to focus on the characters, why they're there, why there's three instead of five. And you have to balance that against why why are these characters in the position that they're in? While at the same time still still maintaining the same type of story that you would expect if there were five instead of three. Or six or seven or eight or twelve. It, it you could you could do a Super Sentai uh style of show where there's twelve characters, if it makes sense as to why there's twelve characters. And that that's more of a character driven uh story. Uh, you could look at you could look at Power Rangers, Gridman, uh, uh, HX Eros. It makes sense as to why you have you have those characters there. The thing that doesn't change is the fact that it's a uh, it's it's a it's a Super Sentai style story. So it's it's not something as easy where you can just say well it has to it has to fit this this checkbox in a way it does but it it 
I would argue it's more. It's more about what checkboxes are you looking at? Mm -hmm. hey, again, for example, you can take uh, you could take Gridman and Formula. They both. fit the uh, Super Sentai formula, where yeah, it's uh, teenagers that are that are fighting for humanity, and they're they're fighting against uh, some sort of existential existential threat. God, if I can talk, <laughs> <laughs> and it doesn't matter if it's if it's digital. It doesn't matter if it's aliens. It still falls in line with that same that same feel of it's teenagers with more power than they arguably should have fighting for the greater good of humanity, regardless of where that threat is coming from. It it marks those check boxes and it feels like Sentai. Versus you could you could take that and you could try to change it. It doesn't mean it's gonna be bad, but it's not gonna feel like Sentai. Pretty, pretty much, and I do want I do want to make clear that I am not a hardcore traditionalist with this with this approach. The reason what the reason why I'm take I'm taking this approach about traditions is that the quickest way to ki the quickest way to kill off interest is to is a, is the is going too far on either side of the tradition pendulum. On one side. There is changing too much, and thus you don't, and thus the audience doesn't have anything to really latch onto. Whereas being too traditional means you're going to exhaust yourself and run the audience off sheer, out of sheer boredom. And that's that's a good point to bring up as well. It you can still maintain the same type of uh, style or feel. But if you just rinse and repeat over and over again, uh, it, you're not going to hold the audience's interest. Uh, and for example, I, and I hate to bring it up, and I know Shades is probably going to want to slap me. Isekai. Mm. It, if you constantly give, give me a story where specifically the power fantasy uh, genre of Isekai, where Someone dies, they're resurrected as uh, the hero or the demon king, and you know, rinse, repeat. I, wh why do I really care about the story? It's the same thing I've seen over and over again. It's not. It's from a from a larger storytelling perspective. It's it's been done. It's been done over and over again. It's not engaging. It's not compelling. Now, if you give me if you give me a, a certain group of characters that I care about, and it's it's a little bit different than just again power fantasy isekai, then okay. I, for for example, one of the more popular shows going on right now in a cur current season of anime is the uh, the Misfit of the Demon Academy or Demon King Academy. Oh yeah, I've heard about that one. Mm -hmm. The reason that show works isn't because it its premise is new. It's not. It's it's a very cookie cutter premise. The reason it works is because the characters are actually compelling and it's entertaining to watch. I do want to note that when you meant when you mentioned Power Fantasy Isekai, the thing that immediately came to mind was the hero is overpowered but but overly cautious. Oh God! Oh, God. <laughs> that's 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 a bad that's a bad that, one though. I don't like it. That show is that show not, is garbage. It it's trash. But uh, since you bring it up, Mildra, the reason that show was successful wasn't because the premise was something new. No. The reason that show was successful is because the premise is so incredibly absurd. And the show knows it, 
they present you with an incredibly absurd uh, absurd premise and they stick to it to a T. I I consider to a, not something just to like a T to a fault. I consider something like that to be a co- to be a comic endurance test. I.e., how much can you get out of one joke? Um, the reason that show, the reason that show is popular is because yes, it is. It is a very formulaic show. The only good thing about it is the last episode, because it does have a satisfying ending, and I I don't want to dwell on that too much. Mm-hmm. But it is yeah. a. It is a storytelling aspect where you could take even the most garbage premise and the most cookie cutter characters, the most cookie cutter story. There is still an aspect where if if a story has a good beginning and a good ending, you you can make it successful. And that's the only area that show succeeds in is the fact that it does have a very, very satisfying ending. Everything else about the show is crap, but the ending is good. Now, getting back to the matter at hand, I really, I really, ho- I really hope against hope that when Arakawa finishes what he's doing with Kira Major, that some that somebody there writes some sort of um, Super Sentai Bible, because that is the kind that is the kind of thing that is necessary. If you want, if you want to stop being the drunken sailor then that's what you're going to have to do. Because yeah. you can't rely on... on Ara- you're not going to be able to rely on Arakawa to bail you out again in 10 years. No. Well, I guess I have to ask the question. What What would you consider to be the, uh, the number one defining factor of a Sentai series? The problem is there... I don't think there is a number one defining factor besides the fact that there's a team. That's the, yeah. it's in the name. Uh, I would actually make the argument the the defining factor of a Sentai series is... Uh, and it doesn't have to be a team, but... Someone who is who is given power and has to learn how to use that power in, in a way that is is beneficial to those around them and not in a way that is, uh, I'm not using this for my own good. I'm using this for the betterment of society. Uh, uh, selflessness, convictions. Uh, I would argue that's at the core of a Sentai series. Okay. It's at, it's at least a step towards that direction. But ultimate, ultimately, the um, the the core a core thing that I a core thing that I would um, now obviously you can use elements of the hero's journey and you'll ha- and you'll have a good chunk of the work done done for you. Um, the other th- the other thing I would the other thing I would say that sh- that should be focused on is di- is um disparate people um com- coming together for that um good is when you think of a, when you think of a lot of um a lot of the good sentai series every, every individual character has their own little story about how they ended up getting to that point where they had where they had to use the suits and on um. Yeah, uh, I mean, if you if you look at some of the more recent ones, um, Shinkenger, Gokaiger, uh, and up into even Juoger, um, there's always a good reason and a good and a good understanding of why. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess you could also make the argument that in in a good Sentai series, if you take any one individual character they're usually fairly weak it's it's the group that actually makes everybody strong and their their opponent whoever they're fighting against whether it's a physical opponent or uh, something circumstantial and by themselves they can't overcome it 
Yeah. And those those are the things that I think should I think should be focused on, especially since when it comes to this whole thing of me- of messing with the formula, you mess with the formula too much, you no longer have one. Well, again, that's it's sort of like a, again, if you're talking about a Sentai series, we're not talking about Bleach or Dragon Ball Z. You can't just you can't just train or have. Uh, have have a certain name or a certain lineage it now that i think about it with sentai it really does boil down to the fact that unless you work as a group unless you work as a team and i know yep friendship is magic i get it i get it fine make your jokes but it with Sentai, I would say one of the uh, defining factors really is that individually the characters by themselves are weak and they rely on each other as a team to overcome their obstacles. Without that, it doesn't really feel like Sentai. Mm. Even that, then, I don't, think that's en- that's enti- I don't think that's entirely accurate because there are, there have been some very good Sentai series where all of the characters are really strong and it's just that whatever they're facing is even stronger than that um decker ranger all five of the decker rangers initially are strong people they're all strong individuals in their own right each has a specialty all of them can can do something the others cannot and do it very well and even then when they're actually in battle or doing things uh, that have to do with actually apprehending the alienizers, they are all very strong in their own right. It's just that this is a large, organized criminal syndication, something much bigger than themselves. And so that's why their uh, opponents can still give that challenge because it's this huge criminal underground that isn't just on Earth, it's universal. And so it's it's a, it's scope at that point rather than whether they're actually weak or not. Well, and that's that's where I would give that's where I would give pushback. I don't disagree with you, but and this is where I say uh, individual character development versus larger storytelling is important because despite how strong your characters actually are, it they're still fa- they're still facing a threat that by themselves individually regardless of how strong they are by comparison they're they're weak so they you know they might they might be great at one thing or they might be strong by themselves individually they might be able to win in a one-on-one fight but in the grand scheme of things they're they're still technically weak so you have to actually rely on the strength of others to overcome a larger obstacle. And that's that's more the point I was trying to get at where you know they're not they're not like Ichigo. They're not like uh uh Naruto. They're they're not Luffy. Well, that's I don't like making that comparison because I don't like making that comparison because that's apples to oranges in this case. Well, and the the reason I bring the reason I use those is because I know they're going to be the more well known characters. More, my point is, in in a uh, in a Sentai show, even your main character is not going to be able to overcome something in a way that is it makes all the other supporting cast look weak by comparison. They they will all have their you know their moment in the sun, so to speak. If that makes sense, it to an it's extent. not a show that revolves. Well, I'd say it's a good a good Sentai series, anyways. It's not a show that revolves around one main character, but it revolves around the group. Well, yeah, and that was my point that the that the core component of Sentai, no matter what it is, is going to be that word right there: Sentai, a task force, a team. Yeah, I don't disagree. I, it's yeah. a show about, yeah, it's a show about, for lack of a better word, teamwork. Yeah, yes. Yeah, 
by by ourselves we might be strong but by comparison we're weak but together we're a lot stronger than we would be as individuals and through through our powers combined we shall overcome the uh the negative <laughs> yes, ever use it, that it, phrase it, again it, around me it, it's it's, it, it's, it's a <laughs> i win i win tonight <laughs> I, love you. I love you too Mildred. <laughs> Are you, sure are you sure that's not a loss, Doku? Uh, it's all a matter of perspective. Yeah. <laughs> but you, have to, you have to remember, uh, bitches love cannons. Oh, have none of you watched the Helsing Abridge? I'm disappointed. Oh no, we all we probably ha we have. have. I'm just I'm just dis I'm just disappointed in how in how forced you did that. Yeah. Oh, that was a that was what we call a non sequitur, good sir. But I'm I'm not apologizing. With the but with that with that in mind, I think I think overall this this whole there is there is the temptation to think that this whole drunken sailor problem is is past with how well Kira Major has been doing. I would uh -uh. argue, I would argue. Ask me that again in five years, when the, when um when whatever Kira Major does comes and goes, because there's been plenty of instances where some where a show was good at the start and then shit the bed near the end. We've seen this plenty of times in and out of Tokusatsu. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And... Half of uh, half of Trigger's properties anytime they suddenly go to space. Um, <laughs> we're not going into that because that's a whole other rabbit hole. Yeah, and I know in shades of <laughs> again, yeah. you're constantly, constantly talking. I I love to put honey on my biscuits, darling. <laughs> Do you want to die today, Goku? Because I will be more than happy to oblige you. I'll pu I'll put it this way: Frank's was good up until the Verm showed up. Like I said, we're not. I have driving a, it. <laughs> we're not. I have a dark saber. I will use it. <laughs> the point is, when it comes, when it come, when it comes to do, when it comes to taking kit, doing the, doing this whole, is the dark, is the dark age over? Kira Major mm. is eventually going to end. And yeah. it is extremely unlikely to the point where I will probably do a legit spit take if Arakawa is back for whatever um is work is being worked on after that. And this is and this is a repeat problem that the Super Sentai division of Toei has had where they um, learn the wrong lessons from success, or they think that, it, or they think that a, a given show is successful for one thing, so double down on that one thing. And that is something I could easily see happen if um, and I will, I will make a prediction if, if um, the show after Kira Major uses vehicles again. Just straight, just straight vehicles for the for the max. That will lean in. That will lean in proving me right on that on that particular front. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen. I'm just ma I'm just making a um, bit of theory crafting. I'm not going to say it's a theory because it's a, because theories are made of facts. So it's a hypothesis. Yes. You're testing, you're testing your hypothesis. Yes, let's get let's get that right. Um, okay then. When it comes now, there's also the there's also the fact that when it came to the when it came to the decline that we that we saw throughout the Heisei era, that was a, that was a period of ch of chipping away at that at that granite for years. That's why I say that if they if they maintain the same momentum that they have right now five years from now. Then I will be a little more willing to say, okay, the dark days are over. But right now, but right now, what I'm seeing is an oasis. 
an oasis in a desert. And I think that I think that is I think that is an effective. God damn it! Oh, damn it, Ganon! Damn it, Zelda! <laughs> it's not my fault. I get notifications. You can mute then put your, your notifications. Your phone on vibrate. My phone's not even near my microphone. It's apparently okay, near there... enough for us to hear it, so clearly you're not doing yeah. something right. But we we have to ask the question. Were they light arrows or fire arrows? <laughs> ah. Keep talking, you'll find out which one. Hookshot? <laughs> Bomb arrows, asshole. Hey, the bomb chew is the best thing in the world. I don't care what anyone says. It's cute and it explodes. Monk, can I kill him? <laughs> <laughs> I think you'll have to get in line for that. We can take turns. Death by a thousand cuts. Death by a thousand cuts. <laughs> <Damn it. laughs> like I said, you're going to have to get in line. All right. Where's my iron knuckle armor? <laughs> God damn it. Yeah, let's yeah, let's put you in iron knuckle armor and then put you and then put you it then put you in a place with a bunch of thunderstorms. You could always roll me down a hill. Nah, the thunderstorms <sighs> are more fun. Okay, Naruto. <laughs> yeah, you set it up. I didn't. <laughs> I had to take advantage of the opportunity. How many rakes? My <sighs> cheeks. Are hurting from too much smiling. God damn it! <laughs> That's a good thing. We like that. But with but with that said, before before we end up um, completely completely ruining our gimmick, <laughs> we have a gimmick. I think th I think that I think that is a as good a spot as any to call to call it before we end up going completely off off it. Um, yeah. Now I I will I will note. When I was doing the when I was doing the weekly weekly call with Shades and Company on um, Discord, I couldn't help but notice that I did not have a single drop off the entire time. So what I'm going to do is sometime sometime this week, I'm going to run a a um test to see if to see if I'm out of the woods regarding that little tech problem. If I if I am, we might be enacting a few changes when it comes to Geek Watch. And of course, um, I do have a set of interviews lined up. Fortunately, Monday is the only day this week that I'm doing a double header. Unless I get some surprise <laughs> notification, which I don't think is likely. Um and of course, and of course, we'll be back here next Sunday with a with a new topic with Geek Watch that is not going to be a Tokusatsu related topic. I don't plan on doing Tokusatsu for a few weeks. But until then, on behalf of the Good Brothers, present and not present, my name is Mildra. I am your gaming monk, and join the watch. <laughs> <laughs>